powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Janelle Slade. Tonight we learn more about the pilot flying the single engine plane that crashed north of Billings Saturday night. Also more details learned surrounding that crash and some questions answered about the tower that the Cessna 182 clipped before it crashed near Dunn Mountain. Now new information has been developing since the plane crash over the weekend that took four Billings lot Billings lives. Q2 Zoe Zandora standing by now with some possible answers as the investigation continues. Zoe. Russ and Janelle, today I spoke with a Federal Aviation Communication Officer and he confirmed that at 5.40 p.m. Saturday night, the same plane took off from Hardin to return back to Billings and the crash happened at 6 o'clock p.m. right here in, near the Dunn Mountains. Now, Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder said from what he observed, the plane hit both a tower and guy wires. Now here is the Billings aeronautical sectional chart. As you can see, all the radio and TV antennas on the south side of the rims are clearly labeled because of their height. And the coal strip power lines are labeled here, as you can see, because of their height as well. Now this tower, some people were questioning why it's not on this map. Here is where the crash happened near the Dunn Mountains. Nothing is labeled. People wonder why. Well, that tower was hit, according to Linder, it was 185 feet tall. According to the map's legend, the tower is not charted if it's under 200 feet, which explains why the tower is not even on the map. Now, I think the biggest question that still remains is why was the plane flying so low? We will stay on this investigation and update you with further information. Russ and Janelle. All right, thanks so much, Zoe. Now the FAA and NTSB are both yeah. investigating. We also learned today the man flying that plane was a respected local pilot who will be missed. The deadly plane crash reverberating around the flying community here in Billings, where pilot David Halo was well known and had earned top credentials. I talked to one Billings pilot who knew Halo for years. We were both members of a flying club called the Plane Folks Flying Club. Michael May has been a pilot for over 40 years and got to know Dave Halo well during that time. He says news that his friend had been killed in a crash came as quite a blow. Well, I was just absolutely shocked to hear that uh, Dave had been in this crash. Um, Dave was one of the more highly rated pilots in our area. He was an airline transport rated pilot and was also a flight instructor and a ground instructor. May says flying a single engine plane at night as Halo was doing is something he tries to avoid if possible. And it's something that's always on your mind. If you have a mechanical problem or for some other reason have to land immediately at night, uh, you have one option as a single engine pilot and that's to land right now on whatever's down there. My suspicion would be that there was either some kind of a mechanical problem or a medical problem uh, because there's just no other reason for him to be that low, uh, especially since he knows this area and has been flying for many, many years in this area. So he knows the terrain around here very well. So my suspicion is that he either had a mechanical problem or a medical issue, but that's totally a guess. The NTSB will still have to determine exactly what went wrong, causing the plane to crash, killing all four men on board. In the meantime, Michael May says he'll always remember his friend like this. Well, as a good man and an excellent pilot. We still don't know about funeral arrangements for Halo and the three other men who were killed in that crash. A suspect accused of stabbing a 56-year-old man multiple times at a downtown Billings hotel last night faces up to 20 years in prison. 29-year-old Andrew Leeper is now charged with felony assault with a weapon. Court documents state the victim told police just before 9 o'clock last night Leeper stabbed him in the stomach in the room that the two were sharing at the Dude Rancher Lodge. A third man in the room told police he saw Leeper make punching motions toward the victim, but was unaware he had a knife. About two hours later, Leeper returned to the hotel and was taken into custody. The victim was taken to the hospital. California man sentenced to 10 years in prison today after he admits he trafficked meth from Mexico to Billings for two years. 27-year-old Antonio Valenzuela pleaded guilty to conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute methamphetamine. 
Federal investigators found Valenzuela among a group of couriers who brought meth to Billings in 2017 and 2018. Investigators tracked Valenzuela in 2017 after they seized a cell phone from a meth distributor. And Valenzuela drove a car filled with some 20 pounds of meth to Billings with a street value of $150,000. The case is part of the U.S. Department of Justice's Project Safe Neighborhoods, a federal initiative to reduce violent crime in America. In another meth sentencing today, a Billings tattoo artist is sentenced to 15 years in prison for trafficking and selling the drug at his tattoo parlor. 42-year-old Charles Eugene Vendetti was convicted in a jury trial back in August. During that trial, prosecutors presented evidence showing that Vendetti sold meth to an undercover agent on three occasions with two of those drug buys occurring at Vendetti's tattoo business at 145 Grand Avenue in Billings. Federal Judge Dana Christensen also sentenced Vendetti to five years of supervised release. A committee working to legalize marijuana in Montana has formally submitted two proposed initiatives that they would like to get on the November ballot. Tonight, MTN's Jonathan Ambarian takes a closer look at those proposals. Leaders with New Approach Montana say they've been meeting with people across the state to determine what a marijuana legalization effort should look like. This is a Montana initiative, Montana Marijuana Legalization Made in Montana. This week they submitted the text of their proposed initiatives to the Montana Secretary of State's office. The first, a statutory initiative, is around 25,000 words long. It lays out the structure for a recreational marijuana system. The proposal would allow people 21 and over to possess and use small amounts of marijuana and would provide for small home cultivation. It would create licenses for adult use dispensaries, set a tax of 20% on recreational sales, and reduce the tax on medical marijuana to 1%. First and foremost, it's, you know, it's going to offer Montanans a little more freedom. And, uh, you know, that's part of the ethos of Montana is that we're free and that as adults we can make decisions on our own. Leaders say much of the structure comes from Montana's current medical marijuana laws. Nothing's going to be surprising there. Um, the same rules apply that applied before for the most part. Just now we're opening the system um, for adults 21 and over. In contrast, the second initiative is just two words. It would amend the state constitution, which leaders believe is the only way they can make the minimum age 21 instead of 18. I'm very committed to 21 and over. You know, and the recent studies have shown when you have a tightly regulated marijuana market, you can keep marijuana away from teenagers. The two initiatives must now go through legal reviews with the state. New Approach expects they could be approved for signature gathering by this spring. It will take more than 25,000 signatures to get the statutory initiative onto the ballot and more than 50,000 to get the constitutional initiative onto the ballot. This is definitely a monumental task, but one that we're up to. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thanks, Jonathan. Another group, Montana Can, has also submitted a proposed initiative to legalize marijuana here in the state. Leaders say their main disagreement with New Approach's proposal is the tax rate. They initially proposed a 15% tax, but may resubmit their draft with an even lower rate. Montana state lawmakers are in Helena this week for some special meetings on the state budget, taxes, and other subjects. One of those topics is whether the legislature should meet every year or in annual sessions. Montana is one of only four states where the legislature meets in regular session once every two years. A legislative committee is studying whether to recommend switching to annual sessions or perhaps change the schedule of the current 90-day biennial sessions. On Tuesday, lawmakers and the public weighed in on the possible moves. Now, some of those who opposed annual sessions, including Missoula Democratic Senator Diane Sands, said they would favor starting the regular session a month later in February. She said the current schedule, beginning the first week of January, right after the holidays, is too chaotic. Veteran lawmaker John Esp, a Republican senator from Big Timber, said he thinks shorter annual sessions might help encourage more people to run for office. People who testified today also said any move to annual sessions would require a change in the state constitution, which would mean a public vote. Well, now turning to a first look at weather with Q2 Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire. And Bob, word is there we actually reached zero. We did. We got up to zero today. We weren't there very long, but we were there for a little bit. I, you remember Connor Pregatry used to work for us yes. in the weather department? Yes. I talked with him today. He lives in Edmonton now. 
It was 40 below zero there. Oh, oh wow. yeah. We went to five below here in Billings. You saw teens below zero cross our high line. Now, here's what's going to happen tonight. Our temperature is going to go down to eight below zero. It'll be 22 below zero over at Haver tonight. And then what about for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, I think you're going to like this. Tomorrow night's low about zero. That's all. Hey, that's good news. Then after that, look what happens. Teens for a high on Wednesday, 20s on Thursday and Friday, and back up to the 30s on Saturday and Sunday. We don't show it here, but by Tuesday, we could be looking at maybe 44 degrees. So, yeah, we have a big warm-up coming our way. We'll talk more about that coming your way in a few more minutes. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. Well, another nonstop flight is coming to the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. Allegiant says it will begin offering nonstop flights from Bozeman to Nashville beginning May 21st. The twice-a-week flights will leave and arrive on Thursdays and Sundays. The new Bozeman flight is part of a big expansion for the budget airline, which announced 44 new nonstop routes nationwide today. Well, there's more news from across our state tonight. Read for Peace. Governor Steve Bullock tours Montana elementary schools to spread the word of Martin Luther King Jr. Join us for that and more on tonight's statewide MTN News at 9 on The CW. But first, still to come on tonight's 530 News, sniffles and coughs all too common around the office right now. We'll have some advice on how to make sure you don't catch the bug. And later in sports, we catch up with a key member of last year's Montana Western National Championship team who has moved to one of the biggest basketball programs in the country. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.